Welcome to Channel 18 News, I'm Jim Rogers. Producers shipped a record number of preconditioned cattle to the Silver Springs Livestock Commission sale for September's Northeast Texas Beef Improvement Organization sale that was held Wednesday. Producers consigned 6,955 head of calves and yearlings to the net bio sale that drew a big crowd of sellers, buyers, and visitors. September sale record was more than 1,000 more than the previous year. A total of 1,800 head of cattle were sold over the internet. 44 buyers purchased all the cattle at an average price of $907.89 per head. The demand was very good for all weights of cattle, while replacement heifers were in good demand and moved at a good price. Feedlot buyers were well represented with cattle going to feed yards in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and Colorado. Some cattle were purchased to get them ready to go on winter wheat later in the season. Once again, the number of sellers exceeded previous records with 303 producers consigning cattle to the sale. NetBio holds six preconditioned calf sales per year, which is the marketing arm for the members of the organization. However, this year there will be seven. The November 15th annual our anniversary sale has already been booked. They, are, they will have a second sale on Wednesday, November 29th. The calf weaning date for that, October 15th. Booster deadline, October 30th. Tis the season for the Lights of Life campaign through the Healthcare Foundation. They've got lots of events, including one next week that you're going to want to go to. So let's find out more from Meredith Cadell. We just geared up. We had the style show a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, I guess, and uh, this really gears us up for the Lots of Life campaign, and it'll end in January with the gala. Well, Lights of Life means the fundraising efforts for the Healthcare Foundation. Yes, they basically call it the campaign, the Lots okay. of Life campaign. And so, like I said, we kicked it off September 14th for the style show, and then we have multiple events that take place between now and the gala, which kind of ends the campaign um, on January 27th. And so, Lights of Life, did it first, was it first just the tree lighting? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's really how it started. I think. 21 years ago, oh I believe, my. maybe was the first tree lighting. Now, don't hold me to that date, but I'm pretty sure that's how long it goes back that they started out doing that. And people would donate $25 and they would light the tree that night that they would light it and it would symbolize a person, a loved one, whether right. if they were still living or memorialize them. And so we've just kind of expanded that. So we're going to continue to do that. Um, it's the last week, the last Thursday in November or the first week in December. I don't have the date with me right now. Okay. That's still a ways out. But um, now we do luminaries. And so um, you can honor or memorialize a loved one with a luminary and they line the gardens. And so it's really beautiful to pull in at night and then we'll light the tree. Santa will be there and all that fun stuff so um so that's our last event that we have prior to the gala in january well it is very heartwarming and the gardens are beautiful mm -hmm. yes they are it's such a peaceful place to be it's it's interesting working at the hospital now because i go out every day when i'm leaving to go you know to lunch or to go home for the afternoon it's amazing how many people are out in the garden it's such a peaceful place if you have a loved one that's sick and um, you can kind of get some reprieve and go out and just sit on one of the benches under the trees um, or people like to walk out there you know i see a lot of employees that'll take advantage on their lunch break to go out there and walk i should probably do that <laughs> but um it, they're really nice and then at christmas time you know we have all of our sponsors for the gala that are out there as well as the beautiful christmas trees and so you see lots of people out there taking pictures at christmas and then also you see lots of people taking pictures throughout the year you know they love to bring their children out to do baby pictures you always see prom pictures mm -hmm. all that always take place at the gala so we're very proud of the gardens and uh, that's when we'll do our tree lighting out there in december okay so let's do the lineup of events okay now we are in Lights of Life campaign. Style show was a huge success. Absolutely. It was fabulous. We had more people and raised more money than we had ever done in the past four years. So um, it was a great. Carrie Krause and at Lou Nails did a fabulous job. And um, so that was last week whatever that day was, the 14th. It seems longer. It does it? seem longer, but I think it was just last week. Um, and then this upcoming week, we have a sip and see. 
And it sounds awfully hoity-toity, but it's not. It is a fabulous night. I hope people will join us. Um, Dr. Scott and Deanna McDermott own the home at 729 Church Street. So if you're not familiar with that, if you're headed north on Church Street toward the hospital and you cross the railroad tracks, it's that first white, beautiful home that has the porch um, on the left-hand side. And um, it was built in 1896. And I ca- I was able to tour it yesterday um, with Deanna and the woodwork in that home alone is spectacular. And I talked to Dr. McDermott yesterday, and he said, I've had a toothbrush on every piece of that wood restoring <laughs> it. So um, it's just a really beautiful home. There's a ton of history to it. John Sellers will do the historical tour. And um, so people can come at 6 o'clock, and we do appetizers. Then we have a nice um, adult beverage to sip on as you make your way through the house. And John does a fabulous job with knowing all the history. Yesterday, I was so excited. I got some information from Deanna, and I said, it to John. He said, I already know that, plus a lot more (laughs) about the home. So he's excited. Um, Plain and Fancy does appetizers, so we'll have some fun finger foods to snack on and uh, tour the home. So it's kind of a, depending on how many people come, um, John will do one or two tours throughout the home. And so it's not a whole night thing. It's over by 7.30. If you're in at 6 and you're in the first tour, you know it won't take you very long. But um, it's a $25 donation at the door. Everything is donated for that day, and so all the proceeds go toward our campaign of trying to raise $400,000 this year. Okay, so that's your goal. Yes. Well, now, so many of us see these beautiful homes as we drive around and we think, oh, I wonder what it looks like in there. (laughs) And so, how do you make a selection of a home, or does someone volunteer? Well, actually, this is the first one that I've done since I've been at the foundation, and Dr. McDermott's on my board, and I had noticed um, via Facebook that they were remodeling it and, and had just kind of watched the process as they've been living there. And so, he and I were just discussing it one day, and he said, let me ask Deanna if she'd like to do that. And uh, she agreed. And it's just been so hospitable and so thankful that we're coming. And so uh, when I went yesterday, she's like, there's, you know, they're in the process. You know, when you remodel a home or restore it, um, it's hard to ever finish. And so she's like, well, that floor is not finished. And I told her, I said, it doesn't matter. You're able just to see (laughs) the magnificence of, um, of the woodwork and just all the hard work that they've put in it to bring it back to life. So it's a really neat home. And I hope people will join us. Beautiful. That's 729 Church Street. Yes. Out close to the hospital, and Mm -hmm. that is next Thursday? Next Thursday at 6 o'clock. Okay, the 28th. (laughs) Don't let that slip out of your memory or put it on your uh, schedule or whatever. And then what? Oh, my goodness. Then we have the next thing that we'll do is a quarter auction. And I did not know what a quarter auction was. It is the most, if you've never been to a quarter auction, it is the most fun. event. Basically, we have vendors. Those vendors put one item up for us to bid on. So you pay $10 to get in the door and you bring a roll of quarters. Or if you're like me, maybe you bring two rolls of quarters. <laughs> and every item that comes up for auction, if you like that item, um, you may place a bid on it. You would put a quarter or two quarters or three quarters, depending on the value of the item. So I think you and I were talking, we used to a Vera Bradley wallet, for example, maybe Lou Nels had brought that in, um, and let's just say it was fifty dollars, and you loved it, it was beautiful, and you wanted to bid on it. You would put two quarters on the table, and you would hold up your numbered paddle, and then we draw. We'll have a big hopper, and we draw the number out of the hopper, and if that's your number and you bid on it, because you may not want to bid on it, but if you bid on it and we draw that number, you would win that Vera Bradley wallet. And then if nobody, if we draw a number that and that person didn't bid on it, then we will draw another number. So okay. all of the items will be auctioned off that night, and then it's a great opportunity to get to shop. We plan on having 30 plus vendors that night, mm-hmm. so it's a great night um, for men and women if they want to come. I picture it more as a women's event, but men are certainly welcome and um, come and maybe win something for their wife or daughter or something and then you get a chance to shop at all those vendors so it'll be a fun night right before Christmas to um, and it's a great once again all the money for us goes back to the foundation every time and vendors also are selling uh, tickets yes the vendors will actually and we're just gonna we haven't really even started promoting it very much yet but vendors um, have the option of selling 10 tickets or they can pay a fee to have a booth one or the other my option would be for them to sell the tickets because it'll be easy to sell the 10 tickets and um, and that's how they get in so um, it's a real fun time if you've never done one before it's a great way for us to raise money for the foundation and it's a fun night to get to do a little bit of shopping win a little have a fun time 
great. Yeah. Well, that takes us only about halfway through this uh, campaign season. <laughs> it does. Um, then mid-November, we'll do Fly Your Flag, and we do the bidding live on the radio in the morning, and um, basically, schools call in to get their team, their alma mater uh, flag to fly over the courthouse the week of Thanksgiving. The past couple of years, Texas A&M Commerce has edged out Texas Tech, so uh, we shall see this year. I think it's time that maybe the Aggies, you know, we have so many Aggies in Sulphur mm-hmm. Springs, we do. and they just haven't been able to pull out a win yet, so uh, we're going to have to work on the Aggies and the Baylor Bears, because we have lots of those, too. So um, so we'll do that in November, and then that rolls us right into the end beginning end of November, beginning of December, when we do the tree lighting that we've talked about. With those beautiful luminaria, and I can't really wait to see that. I can picture the gardens, because, well, anytime you go to the hospital, it's always picture perfect yes i mean i never see the grass even grow they don't even (laughs) let the grass grow mike story does an amazing job of keeping the grounds out there and he you know i'll go out there one day and there'll be red tulips and i'm thinking where did those red tulips come from and mike just has chosen to plant those and they're spectacular so he does a fabulous job of keeping them clean and their guys are always out there working you've really you fairly ever even see a leaf in the you know on the grass so they do a great job we'll be in the gardens i think it is october the 5th also a thursday Mm -hmm. for the walk to remember absolutely um i've been getting all the information from karen karen weatherman a walk to remember which um, benefits terrific tuesdays is october 5th i think it's 5 30 6 o'clock just yeah come by 5 45 right after work (laughs) and i was at one of the mini walks yesterday and they are well attended Good. Yes, they are. And it's always a beautiful night out there, music playing, and um, for, for such a great cause for Alzheimer's. Absolutely. Well, then the gala. Then the gala. <laughs> Um, so, so excited. Charles and Sharon Helm are the chairs this year, and they are just amazing. We have so many new things going on at the gala this year. I'll have to come back and talk about those because mm-hmm. we'd be here till 9 o'clock. But, um, you know, it's gonna. the theme is Jewel of the Nile, which is an Egyptian theme. <clears throat> so it'll be very different than what you've ever seen before. You know, um, when you picture Egypt, it's not a lot of floral, which is interesting going from last year. The theme, when we had the beat goes on, and everything was floral. Everything was bright colors, lime green, and orange orange and pink tons of flowers this year there won't be a ton of floral and um, it'll be very different but it's going to be extremely elegant and spectacular and we have a new caterer so we've used eddie dean for the past many 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 years um, i think 10 maybe 11 10 or 11 years and now we have a new caterer out of addison so we're really excited they're thrilled to be here they've been wanting this for a long time and so um they'll our guests will be able to have a totally different menu than what they've seen before. So uh, okay, it's going to be wonderful. a great night. Well, and if you haven't made their reservations or they haven't called to get their tickets to the gala, there are very few remaining, so they need to get on the <laughs> stick and get busy. Isn't that the thing with this? It's really, <laughs> really anticipated. Yes. It's a fun night, and it's for such a great cause for the hospital. All the money that we raise um, goes back to our hospital to um, purchase different pieces of equipment and uh, all the things that are needed to really keep our hospital state-of-the-art um, and keep people here in Hopkins County rather than having to go um, to Dallas or to Tyler. Well, let's imagine the little baby, and he can't be in the local hospital, or couldn't before, local mm-hmm. hospital, off in a big city, mm-hmm. dividing the family and the mother. Maybe she's hardly able to right. be up on her feet anyway, um, but that doesn't have to be now. Absolutely. Last year we purchased um, the giraffe omni bed, so any child that's born at 32 weeks, and we can actually keep them here in our local hospital. And you know, a lot of babies are born early, and sometimes we can take care of them. But, but now by having those two, actually, I think we have three giraffe omni beds. They had one prior to. Um, now we can keep them here in our local hospital, so families aren't separated. You're not spending the money driving back and forth. The emotion of trying trying to drive back and forth to see your child Mm -hmm. Um, and then maybe have your other children that are here having to go to school Mm -hmm. with your husband or family members so and those are the things that we really try to purchase at our hospital that will make a difference in the lives of the patients that are here at Christus. Thank you for what you're doing with that. Absolutely it's my pleasure it's such a it's a fun job it's an easy job because um, we need to have a very good hospital and the more money that we can raise to purchase that equipment the better off it's going to be for all the residents in this area. Mm -hmm. It's a job, but it's a pleasurable job because you get to see good, happy results. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We're happy for you. Thank you. I want to make sure, though, that we let everyone know. You mentioned there's few gala tickets. Yes. How might they make contact? They just need to call our office. It's 438-4799. 
Okay. And um, my assistant's out this week, so if they happen to call, please leave a message because, as you can see, I'm not in the office at 8 o'clock like I probably should be, but I have other things I need to be doing out in the community. So um, leave a message. I'll call you back. Same thing for sip and see. We don't necessarily do tickets. It's just a $25 donation at the door. Okay. And we prefer reservations so we can have plenty of food and kind of know how many people are coming. So if they so will call, 438 uh -huh, 4799 just leave me a message, and I'll make sure that you are on the list. And then if you decide last minute on Thursday that you want to come, come on. Would love to have you. Okay, wonderful. Well, you have a great uh, schedule of events for the public yes. through the Lights of Life campaign. Yes. Thank you for making that easy for us here on the radio. And you mentioned your assistant. Now, what is her name? Betty Finn. She is fabulous. She is fabulous. She she has a mind like nobody's business. I can say to her, hey, Betty, what did we do last year for the style show? And she can rattle off a number like nobody's business. You know, I can get close, but she can give me down to the penny. So she's amazing at what she does. So she's off this week. Um, so it's been interesting in my office, you know, me trying to do both jobs, but uh, made me miss her. <laughs> you know, we have just about one more minute left early in your career and one time I found out all the things that you did since you left college and as far as work and so you were sort of in a health care type uh, endeavor for a while before you came to our Chamber of Commerce. Well, which one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, before, actually before I came to the Chamber of Commerce, I taught at PJC and I taught medical classes. So I taught medical terminology, medical billing. I don't know if that's the one you're talking about. There's been so many different things I've chosen to do as my career. So uh, <laughs> it's interesting, though, being at the hospital because I run into so many of my students that I taught maybe medical <laughs> billing. And one of my students is there and I see her every single morning and she's sitting right there doing exactly that, medical billing. So uh, it's a fun, um, that was a fun time in my life. So. Well, thank you, Meredith, for coming in and we will see you at the next Lights of Life event. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.